Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the House Academy show this time, entertaining real estate investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about how to buy a house for less than it's worth, and then obviously sell it for, re- more, uh, sell it for more. Isn't that what everybody wants to do? I don't, I don't believe that everyone wants to do that oh. for some reason. I used, to, I used to believe. Wait. No, hold on. I used to believe that people were born, born understanding how to do a real estate deal and, and the value of it. And well, after we started uh, House Academy, Land Academy, I, I don't believe well, that's the case anymore. That doesn't mean that they, no, I hear you, that they, they should, we think that they should know how to do that, and they don't. We get that. But I would hope that they'd want to. Everyone, you know it's funny, everybody wants to go into these transactions and try to get it for the best price they can on the buy side. But then when they want to sell it, they're ruthless. Yeah. And they want to reset the market and say, I'm going to sell it for X. And they brag about that. It doesn't make any sense. There's all How kinds about of crazy stuff. You buy it right and you sell it right and you just feel good about it on both ends. How about you establish a consistent and profitable way to buy and sell a specific product type in one or two or three maybe markets and retire young. That. Instead of like trying to be a hero, like you just described. Oh, what do you mean? Like buying it right and selling it right? Which, yeah, which part's the hero establish part? Establish a, pr- a procedure. Like uh, I typically buy houses for 30% less than what I actually think I can resell it for the next day. Right. I don't do, want to do a lot of work because I really enjoy sitting in front of a computer and on and on and on. You establish a procedure. And I'm going to sell it for for 15% less yes. than what it is in yeah. its current position. I need That's to make, what I mean. I need a net $25,000. That's what I mean. Bucks. Not I want to buy it for, I want to buy it for, let's say, 20% left, not less, and I want to sell it for 20% more. That's what I feel yeah. like people walk around with doing, and like, that's just no fun. I need a net 25000 bucks This year, I want to do 12 of these things once a month, uh, maybe because I have a full-time job or some other stuff to do. But yeah, I'm very, very interested in making uh, uh, $300,000 I'm on the side. I understand. And then next year, maybe I do two a month, make half a million bucks, and then I'm on my way. That works for me. So the question is, how do I do that with houses? We'll talk about that in the show. Before we get into it, <laughs> we will answer that question, but let's take a coast, uh, question posted by one of our members on the houseacademy.com online community. It's free. Billy wrote, trying to get my LLCs, my LLC slash S Corp going, and I'm trying to figure out which in general is the best structure for land, for land investing. I'm assuming or house investing here. Any recommendations? There's a tremendous amount of uh, helpful feedback from the community on this. So I'm just gonna give you my advice, but if you're at this point in your career, please go on to landinvestors.com and, and look this up, look up LLC. Just keyword search it and you'll see this come up. There, everybody, There's probably 10 people that had mm-hmm. a lot to say about it. Uh, I'm gonna reiterate what I say in all, all, the, all three or four of the education programs that we have out right now. Forget about your LLC for a while. Do a couple deals. Do them in your own name. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lawyer's gonna say, oh my gosh, you're exposing yourself li- uh, legally. An accountant's gonna say, wow, then you're gonna have to file a Schedule uh, a schedule C on your return and, and itemize everything. Don't listen to those people. Just it, And they're both right, by the way. Yes, you are exposed, and yes, you're gonna have to file Schedule C or some version of that wherever, depending on where you live. Who cares? It's more important that you do a couple of deals uh, you know, when you sci- buy and sell a house you're, that you live in, you're just as exposed. When you t- do a tax return, uh, one more schedule is not going to kill you. It's going to cost a couple hundred dollars if you have more to file it uh, with the, your accountant than it would anyway. So don't listen to all these people. Get your feet wet. See if you like the business. Then I think what Billy's really asking is, what do I do now? Because I, I'm in it. I like it. And I can see what's going to happen here in my, my life. Get an LLC where you live, typically. It doesn't have to be where you live, but it makes things a little bit easier, especially if you're in California. And do a sub S uh, election. Why? Because you're going to file a return, and all of the LLCs that you end up happening, you're going to file a corporate return, are going to roll up to your personal return through a sub X election. And it makes it a lot easier and a lot more efficient. Um, and the laws change constantly about filing a corporate return and doing a sub S election. So check with your accountant, but that is the correct structure uh, for it's, it's served us well since the nineties. I've been doing it that way. 
Love it. I was going to add too, just just so everybody listening knows that. So we have two online communities. There's landinvestors.com. Oh, sorry. That's no, okay. No, you did nothing wrong. And then there's um, houseacademy.com has its own online community. And there's a lot of crossover in both of them. So I highly encourage you, if you're looking, especially you need, you have a question, you need an answer. These online communities have been going for years. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of posts and people involved. And it's free to the planet. So go search. If you don't find it in one community, search the other community. You might, you will probably find what you are looking for between one of the two. Thank you. And a lot of this stuff, us too, a lot of it crosses over too, and that's why. You know, this S Corp, LLC Corp, doesn't matter if it's a house flipping or a land flipping, this answer is the same. Today's topic, how to buy a house for less than it's worth. Oh, and one more thing, just oh kidding. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I thought you were serious. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> that would have been three. I know, that's why I did it. <laughs> I kind of just had to do that to you, just to keep, you know, I like to keep you on your toes, right. Stephen. Thank you. You're welcome. This is why you're listening. <laughs> Jill's famous. I have to just say, I have to say this to everybody. Jill is famous for we have a little talk. Uh, I I turn around on my heel. We're all done with the conversation. I start to walk out the door, get maybe four or five steps out of the door in her office, and she says, "Oh, and uh, one more thing." In my defense. How do you defend that? I can tell you right now. You're often leaving before I'm done. You're done. I'm not done. Oh. Yeah. It Think all that comes happens back that happens in other me. situations too. You might be done, but I might not be done. <laughs> <laughs> so, just pointing that out. So please don't leave too soon. Don't don't just in both don't of just those, assume. In both of those situations. I, I turn, got what I needed. I turned back around. <laughs> <laughs> and I finished where I started. Thank you. <laughs> but it would sure be a lot easier if you hung in there for just another few more minutes. <laughs> and the same goes for my meetings. <laughs> the meetings we have in my office. The same thing applies there, too. <laughs> oh, man. All you parents with young children have a lot of explaining to do right now. <laughs> All right, so what's how to buy a house for less than it's worth? Yesterday we talked about this on the Land Academy show, how to buy land for less than it's worth. And surprisingly, the uh, not surprisingly, the basic stuff is the same. I will say there are some huge caveats or huge differences in actually doing the deal. So to reiterate from yesterday, it's all about reach. You have to uh, reach the right number of homeowners in a predetermined market where you've done your research through uh, blind offers and you have to get them out there. And a very predictable number of them are gonna respond and you're gonna do a very predictable and consistent number of transactions. For us right now, it's about between 1,800 and 3,000 offers that we send out for an SFR. We end up buying it on our terms. And our terms are not 80% of what it's worth. It's a lot less than that, closer to uh, 40 or 50. So that's the buy side. So what's that, and it's the same with land, the numbers are different. What's the difference? The difference is you actually have to take into consideration what you're buying. You have to look at a market and see what, av what the average price is. Uh, with land, it's so simple because you just know you're gonna sell it for more. There are some pretty serious caveats or, or very specific things that happen when it comes to houses like, I'm not sure you should be horsing around in a market uh, that's like less than a, where the sale price is, uh, where their houses are, are changing hands for 100, 100 to 200, 100 to like let's say $125,000. It's just too hard to make twenty-five dollars or $30,000 on that deal. So there's some things that are different and I can go explain But for them. some people they work. Yeah, I so mean, if you only want to make ten thousand dollars a deal, that's fine. Figures like, like we'll come in, say it's a three hundred thousand dollar house. So I want to clear this up because I think we gave a really funky statistic a second ago. So really, it's a let's say let's just say two hundred fifty thousand dollar house. Picking it up for one ninety is not crazy. Hundred you can't do. Hundred fifty you can't do. That's 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 be silly. But one ninety to you know worth two fifty in its current condition. Oh sure, I think that's very realistic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then you mark it up where you're making, so 190, say you're marking it, maybe you're marking up $40,000, selling it for 230, because it's really worth 250 in its current condition. These are all good, um, solid numbers that everybody can wrap their heads around. 
and it, and it works because think about who you're selling or who you're buying from we were just gosh who were we were talking oh we were talking about this the other day with somebody we were out to dinner with and he said he said um years ago when he was just getting started as a broker he put an ad in the paper he's been around for a long time offering to buy things he said i had this little old lady call me who had this home for 40 years, no mortgage, her husband died, and just wanted to sell it. And she had very specific terms about how she wanted to sell it. She didn't want the neighbors to know. She wanted to keep it quiet. She was like literally moving out in the middle of the night because the neighbors were, were horrible to her. And anyway, he got a great price. Do you remember this story? Yes, very specifically. Okay, yeah. So this, this kind of stuff happens to us all the time. I know, this is the stuff that people are like, that can't be real, but it is. So that's part of our you know, due diligence up front when, 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 when I say we, I mean Steven, when you're picking an area, you're looking at days on the market, you're looking at the owners, you're looking at making sure they have no mortgage, you're looking at equity, you're looking at, you know, do the numbers make sense in this area for us? All of, all of those statistics. So when the letters really go out, it's pretty easy. We know what's going to happen when they... Yeah, I mean, you, you, you just nailed it. Uh, and my really my, my finishing point here is that the big difference between houses and land, houses are way easier to uh, buy and sell than land. And, and, and they're more prevalent. They just require more capital. So the di big difference is that we, we do something called a red, yellow, green test where we look at statistics in a zip code and we pit adjacent zip codes against each other to make sure this, the statistics come out the, the one that shows itself as the best market, we let the data decide. The one the that shows itself rise as a, to the top. Yeah, and so invariably, you're gonna find one or two or three zip codes in any market where the days on market are very low, uh, it's got low inventory compared to how many houses are there, which is all code for people, there's real high demand. People wanna buy houses there, uh, largely, it could be for some weird, strange reason, but usually it's because they're for, uh, more affordable than other adjacent zip codes. I've found. So you don't, there's no guessing. You don't look at a county map in a state and say, you know, that looks like a good county. You let the data decide for you, number one. And number two, when you go to price it and you price land, you kind of have to guess a little bit, not guess, you make a very educated guess. With houses, you, there's all nine web, 10 websites out there that tell you exactly what they think that house is worth that you're about to send an offer out on. They have algorithms like Zillow and Trulia and Realtor, all of them, and they're all different. We make it very easy to take the average of those houses and price it correctly so that, like Jill just nailed it, she, she just said the sentence, you really know what's gonna happen after you buy it. It's true. So the only variable that comes when you buy the property, you need to make sure that the asset itself is gonna be sellable. It can't be falling down. Or you need to buy it so cheap, even if it is falling down, the rehabber or the person that you're going to sell it to or the landlord can justify it because it's so darn cheap. Right. That's Those are the all makes only sense. two things in the house business, household selling business, that you care about. Right. Everything else is data-driven mechanical. Right. You set on an offer assuming it's a good roof, it's a good this, it's a good that. You get the inspection back, now you might adjust and everybody expects it. That's... So, houses are easier. Mm -hmm. I just love because we have comps. We have so much information. Land's getting better, but it's, I don't think it's ever going to be as good as houses. The thing because, with land. Because it has to be. The way that the reporting goes, you know, with houses is so different. And with a mortgage, it has to be reported. Right. The thing, yeah, that's exactly right, Joe. Uh, the thing with land is that there's a, a pretty, pretty uh, obvious opportunity to hit a home run. Mm-hmm. And you're not typically going to do that with uh, houses. You're going to hit single after single after single after single. And sleep well. Yep. And it's very, very, if you're an accountant or an aerospace engineer and you love consistency and you just want to make, you know, you can know, want to know exactly how much you're going to make and what I, how many, how much mail do I have to send out? Who's going to answer my phone? You can be in business in two or three weeks. Oh, oh what? I just have to do this, 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 and this and then maybe I hire a real estate agent instead of sell it myself, I can start this whole thing up really quickly? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what House Academy is. Ding, ding. That is how you buy a house for less than it's worth. Happy you could join us today. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you can find us right next door over on the Land Academy Show. Each Tuesday and Thursday, right here on the House Academy Show. Speaking of home runs, tomorrow, the episode on the Land Academy Show is called Commercial Land. You are not alone.
and your real estate ambition. There is no better opportunity to hit a home run financially in the land business than, in my opinion, commercial real estate. I like commercial land. You can do so much with it. And there's very different types of commercial real estate. Some of it, my favorite type, is when it's got a very specific designation like hotel, cemetery, skyscraper, regional mall. I can go on and on. Long-term care facility. Gentlemen's club. <laughs> <laughs> Fast Why food. Gentlemen? I don't know. Why not? Um, what, what, ladies. Ladies club. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you are right. I am wrong. <laughs> the House Academy show remains commercial free for you, our loyal listener. So wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, please subscribe and rate us there. We Here's are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information. And inspiration. To buy undervalued property. Every single guy I know that goes to a gentleman's club is not a gentleman at all. Mm.